moving on to the section on carbenes, and we're going to be talking about two different types of Fischer carbenes and Schrock carbenes. Schrock carbenes are also known as alkylidines. So first of all, what a Schrock carbene is, that's a metal carbon double bonds where the carbon is also bound to another heteroatom, so not just a carbon, so either nitrogen and oxygen are the main ones we'll be talking about. First one was isolated in 1964 by Fischer and Mosfel, and looks like there's a tungsten carbonyl complex right here. So there's your metal carbon double bond. Now it is bound to some form of alkyl right here, but then also a methoxy. So there's your heteroatom right there. Now in a Schrock carbene, or sorry, a Fischer carbene, uh, this carbon here, so it's sp2 but it's a singlet sp2 species. So if we were to look at binding here, so sp2 there, and then we have say our R group, our methoxy species back there, and then you have this PZ orbital as well. So this would be your sp2s. Okay. So singlet means that both of those electrons are located they're paired into one orbital like this. And that is what is doing that sigma bond to the metal center. Now here you have an empty P orbital. I need to kind of accept electrons. So a couple of different things can happen. Uh, and you can see this is nicely lined up. You guys have seen a lot of backbonding by now. So hopefully it kind of seems like, yeah, you know what, we can probably have metal backbonding or pi backbonding to the carbon and that is indeed what we see. So we can have the metal. So there's our carbon bond right there. Just throw these guys on like that. There's our sigma donor sigma bond. And then you could have easily out of one of these DXY or DYZ XZ easily have pi backbonding. Chi back bonding. Now you can also have, and I'll erase this so you guys good with this one right now. Erase this one. Because you have over on this heteroatom another source of electrons that can donate into that empty P orbital. And you see that as well. And so what you could have in that case is electrons being donated from the oxygen. Okay. So this is pi donation from oxygen to carbon. Okay. Sorry about that. Now looking at these two different scenarios, really, uh, and this one here, what you're looking at is really that true metal carbon double bond, right? We have R and methoxy. And over here, the situation is just a little bit different. We end up with how this negative and positive showing up. Okay, so it is kind of, the bonding situation is a little bit between these two. Some say it's leaning a little bit more in this direction really depends on what papers you're looking at. Um, but interestingly here, if you're seeing that you have this positive kind of up here, you know that you have this, I guess is a big take home here, that you do have this empty P orbital. And that's really what kind of guides the reactivity of these guys. They're generally going to be on electron rich metal centers. So something that can give electrons back to it um, or doesn't necessarily need to have that many electrons. And this carbon center is really considered to be electrophilic because it's empty. So think of it almost as a, not a positive site, but really susceptible to nucleophilic attack. And so we'll do a little bit of an example here of that. And this is what really differentiates these carbenes and alkylidines, the rocks and the fissures. So for example, Here. So, so, oh, sorry, not cobalt. Chromium carbene, where you have that methoxy and a methyl. 
And this guy here, in the presence of a Lewis base or a nucleophile, it's really susceptible to attack. So it's an electrophilic center, and that nitrogen can attack with that set of electrons. And what you end up with, bed, so we end up having to rearrange things here, right? Something like this, where now this has become positive. Let's fill that out like that. Okay. And you end up doing a hydrogen exchange here, proton exchange, taking out your methanol and reforming. There you have now. And um, sorry, an amine and a methyl, and you're going to kick out methanol. So it undergoes reactivity just like an electrophilic center would in um, organic chemistry. Now moving on to the next one now, these are the alkylidines or Schrock carbenes. Let's erase this. So now I'm talking Schrock, also known as alkylidene. There's a sound over here, always going to be some form of alkyl, another carbon bond, carbon, or two different carbons bond, bonded right there. Now, uh, importantly again, you still have that metal carbon double bond, but in this case here, our metal is usually going to be in a high oxidation state, going to be electron poor. Okay? Uh, and the other thing to note is that now your substituents on the R, these aren't pi donating, so they can't give any electrons to this metal center. The first one was isolated by Schrock in 1974. This here's the one that gives you right here. This would be a neopentilidine species. And over here you also have quite a few, or three neopental ligands. So this is what was isolated first by a hydrogen abstraction on one of these neopentyls. Now, the difference, so there's a few differences, right? Obviously, you don't have an oxygen or a nitrogen over here. And one of the differences is in the electronic structure of this. So they consider this more of a triplet carbon. So it's going to have two unpaired electrons. So they're going to be sp2. And those two unpaired electrons are then going to bond or combine with two unpaired electrons on the metal. So a radical recombination. So I want to look at what I mean by that. If this is our carbon center, so remember we said it's sp2, and I'll draw these guys out like that. So let's just say we're talking about just a regular methylidine. So there's its sp2s. And so you also have that pz orbital. So in this case here that we're saying this is triplet, so you're going to have two unpaired electrons. So when it's binding with the metal now, you're going to have that sigma bond. Let's say that's our dz squared. So there's one set of electrons binding. And then let's use one of these other orbitals right here to make that other bond. So there's an MC double bond. So this is really looking like this, but you can kind of play around with this a little bit. Oops, it's been in the other room. Let's do it down here. Okay. It's really like you have a nucleophilic center on that carbon. Okay. So this is really that difference between the alkylidines versus the Fischer carbenes that we've already seen is that this carbon really acts like a nucleophile. So it's gonna be susceptible to attack from an electrophile. Now it's gonna act similarly to Wittig reactions. If you remember your organic Wittig reactions with the phosphorus, erase this and let's just do a little example to see how that might react with an electrophile or a Lewis acid, which is some of the terms we're going to use a little bit more in this class. So, for example, if you have this cyclopentadienyl tantalum species, 
the methylidine. And you react this with lewis acid, which is a nice typical uh, trimethyl aluminum species. Okay, so this, if this is nucleophilic, and this here, if you remember, lewis acid, it's almost like you're missing electrons in this case. So you're going to have electron donation to form a bond with that aluminum. And what ends up happening in this case here, here, so we have our tantalum species, and now you've pretty much just opened it up. Okay, you're making a negative and a positive in that case. Uh, so another thing I do want to talk about with alkylidine is how do you kind of trap these? Because these are relatively reactive. Uh, because they're so, they're nucleophilic, they're going to react with a lot of different things. And so one way of doing that is something called the Tebbe reagent, which is one way they've realized or one way they've managed to isolate it. So it's a pretty common reagent acting as a source of methylidine, so a methylidine transfer agent. But you can use this technique to trap multiple other alkylidines if you like. Um, so it's just showing you here. So what the Tebbe reagent looks like, the tant are titanium species. We have two CPs. And then it's going to have CH2. This. Okay, this is our Tebbe reagent. Now, the way it works, kind of like this will break off. Okay, so it breaks down into, let's write it like this. Your CPs like this, titanium, methylidine, and it's kicking out. It pretty much does this right away, and this will react pretty much right away as now a methylidine transfer agent. This is showing a way of stabilizing it and really just playing on that nucleophilicity of this methylidine or this alkylidine species. We're going to give those electrons to the aluminum. Meanwhile, a lone pair on chlorine is going to form a bond with the titanium to make this new um, power cycle right here. And then when it breaks down again, you can picture these electrons coming back over form that double bond again, these ones coming back onto the chlorine, this guy separating off again, okay? Now, <clears throat> really, the nature of it in terms of how we described it, carbenes versus alkylidines, it's really just a general classification. The best way of telling which one you have, a carbene or an alkylidine, is just based on the reactivity that you're seeing of that metal carbon moiety. Um, or the carbene moiety. And just kind of food for thought, can you have similar stuff for carbines and alkylidines? So I will leave that with you. <laughs>